Good morning. We're now live um, for our first event for Photo 2021's Photo Book Weekend. Uh, my name is Elias Redstone. I'm the Artistic Director of Photo 2021. And I'm delighted to be joined uh, from um, London by Felicity Hammond. And by in Copenhagen, I believe, we have uh, the collective Sarah Peter and Tobias. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations as the traditional owners of the land on which I'm based today. Um, and I pay my deep respects to elders past, present and emerging and to any indigenous peoples who may be joining us online today. So, <clears throat> um, this whole weekend at Photo 2021 is dedicated to celebrating the art form of the photo book. Um, and we're joined today by, um, by practitioners whose work I admire greatly, who are presenting both as artists within Photo 2021, but also have a very distinguished uh, photo book making practices. So let me introduce Felicity Hammond is an artist and educator based in London. She's developed a practice that both uses and critiques photography, fusing the photographic image and installation. Her expanded approach to photography has been widely recognized through awards such as the British Journal of Photography's International Photography Award and Foam Talent. She's currently undertaking funded research in the Contemporary Art Research Center at Kingston University looking at digital representations of the built environment and the relationship with site. Sarah, Peter and Tobias uh, formed a collective in 2015 in which they document subject matters that revolve around disputed interpretations of reality. They place themselves at the intersection between traditional documentary and art photography. The collective has a conceptual approach which examines issues founded on theories of first person accounts alongside hard facts. They utilize an anthropological method of combining photography and extensive research. Throughout their projects, they share and collaborate on every aspect of the process, from research, interviewing, shooting pictures, to editing the final photos and text. We look forward to hearing more about that later. So the way it's gonna to run today is each of the artists will make a presentation about their, about their book projects. Um, and also introduce the work that they're presenting at Photo 2021. We'll then have a conversation, and if you're watching this live, feel free to send messages or questions, and we'll get to them shortly. So first of all, Felicity, I'm going to invite you to uh, tell us more about your book project property um, and your um, Photo 2021 project fault lines. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen so that um, you can see my book rather than me, I think would be, uh, would make more sense. So do let me know if you can't see this, but hopefully, hopefully you can. Um, I'm going to go into full screen. So if there's any, any problems, just do let me know. Um, so I'll just speak for, for around 10 minutes, but um, this, uh, this is my book, Property, which came out with self-publish uh, Be Happy Editions in 2019. It's, it developed over a really long time. Um, and actually, uh, you know, I, I was sort of having conversations with, with Bruno, who, who runs self-publish Be Happy, about the production of an artist book. And, um, and I suppose the problems with um, the methods and approaches I take to making, uh, making installations and how that would translate into book form. And was very keen that I didn't want to make a book um, that was a sort of catalogue of, of my work or a catalogue of my installations. Um, so I suppose that this, this next slide here just, um, you know, is, is, a, is a documentation of, of, um, of my book. I'm just going to share a video in a moment, which um, shares a sort of little flick through. Um, but really the overview is, it, it, you know, it brings together work made really over around, five, probably around five years. Um, where the majority of, of um, my practice, I, I'm, I suppose in, in broader terms, I'm, I'm sort of interrogating urban space and really trying to sort of understand how, um, how computer generated images have a kind of impact on the production of the built environment. 
So a sort of specific artifact that I'm really looking at is, um, is architectural propositions. Um, so the sort of computer generated images that imagine future architectural space. Um, so I'll just play this, this video whilst I'm talking. Um, so hopefully you can all see that. Um, the book itself is, you know, I, I wanted it, to, I, the methods that I use within my installation practice, I wanted to kind of carry forth into the book. So there are these kind of cut out pages. Um, I, I print a lot of kind of dye bonds and sheet material um, to make sort of images into props and objects in my installations. Um, I wanted to find a way in the book to, to do that. And, and the reason I suppose that I do that within my wider practice and, and wanted that to carry forth in the book as well is because I, I I'm keen to sort of understand how these architectural images point towards a sort of point towards built space, yet the architectural images themselves are made within digital space, made from pixels, made from these kind of intangible materials. Um, so what happens when those images are made objects? Um, and that's really what, what the book's exploring. It's, it's kind of looking at the sort of onstage, offstage nature of urban space. It's looking at um, the, the sort of collision between virtual and and built environment um it's sort of trying to you know it, sort of in the page that just passed you can kind of see um the sort of source material that i use set against the objects that i make that kind of refer to them so all the time within the book there is this sense of um of the sort of physical built environment sort of colliding or um interrupting um the the digital image that sort of imagines it so there's that sort of um I guess kind of virtual and, and material interplay. I think in one of the other things, and perhaps I'm giving quite a sort of quick overview, but um, there's a short amount of time, but what, one of the other things that, um, that, that I wanted to sort of do in this book as well is, is really share the kind of sites, the very specific sites um, uh, that, that I'm photographing. So often those are sort of, um, spaces that have undergone kind of ra uh, rapid urban regeneration in in the uk but also sort of in europe and and in the us as well um you know really i've, I've been kind of commenting on these ideas that this, this sort of mass urban regeneration um or the image of it is is a sort of global one um and part, you know partly that's down to the uh, the digital language of um of new new architectural development sort of drawing upon a sort of digital and universal um software um i should probably talk about a little bit about the kind of palette the color that i use um this sort of very um very specific kind of chroma blue and, and chroma green um that really developed um from from this installation, which was called Property, which, which came two years earlier. So the book itself was really um, an extension of this installation, which itself kind of turned into new installational works kind of um, after the production of the book itself. But this was a, a first kind of time in my practice where I started using this um, kind of chroma green backdrop in my installations. Um, so sort of placing the photographic objects that I was making within a green, green screen space and, you know, I guess kind of considering that the documentation could form part of the um the artistic work kind of beyond beyond the installation itself and you know i guess there was a couple of reasons for that um one of them was the sort of idea of the the kind of indeterminate nature of the chroma green backdrop um the idea that, that these kind of the objects that were sort of referring to the built environment could kind of um, have a you know be, be placed somewhere else or have this kind of continuing um, changing backdrop um, and that's because a lot of the kind of architectural propositions that I'm studying uh, um, feel like they they um, they have the same language um, from place to place to place um, sort of globally so that that's kind of I wanted the, the green screen to sort of indicate this idea of um, of a kind of multiplicity or a sort of changing changing environment or changing backdrop, and that kind of continued forth in the book as a sort of motif, I guess, as a way of indicating that kind of um, yeah that sort of universal language of the um, language of architecture that I'm I'm dealing with. Um, I'll perhaps just say a little bit about this. Um, because it, because it, it, I guess it all kind of feeds in this exhibition that um, that I was planning during the production of making the book, and also that sort of um, I suppose expands on the book, but but also uses the methods for making the book as well. Um, it's my recent solo show that sort of opened and closed and opened again and closed again during the pandemic. Um, currently lying behind closed doors at CO Berlin. 
um, but, but happily opened at Constella Extra City Antwerp um, before, before the pandemic as well. Um, you know, I sort of, I guess I questioned as well in this installation what that use of the green screen really is and whether these digital surfaces really do operate from one place to the next to the next in the sort of, um, uh, in the way that maybe I was thinking. And actually in this installation and in the book as well, I sort of interrupted these green screen spaces, allowed them to become kind of fragmented, um, cut out, um, allow kind of raw materials to intrude upon it. And I guess that's because I, you know, I was really considering that these sort of um, global impositions actually are kind of disrupted by a sort of locale um, that actually can, can sort of local places really be kind of dominated by this global image. So that's a sort of, again, a tension that I'm dealing with both in my installation practice and, and the book as well. Um, so this is really a reconfiguration of a, a lot of the kind of sculptural and photographic works that I've been making over the last few years um, that the book brought together as well. Um, so perhaps I'll just now talk a little bit about my, my project for photo 2021. Um, these are the last couple of uh, install images from, from that project. Um, so the, the work that I've made for photo 2021 is, um, is on a really large scale um, hoarding, um, sort of construction site hoarding. Um, I'm yet to see any installation images, so I'm sharing a, uh, so it's, I'm really sad not to be in Melbourne to see the work um, uh, in situ, but this is, um, this is a small fragment um, of a kind of very long 30 meter um, sort of image. So, you know, I've sort of been studying this thing digitally and um, I'm really interested to see how it looks in, in you know, sort of operating within built space, because really that's what my research is investigating. So I, you know, my artistic, practices is mimicking the very kind of methods that I'm critiquing and dealing with and trying to understand. Um, so it's, a, it's a, you know, in, I suppose intruding, perhaps that's the right word, but intruding within this realm, um, uh, which is where I'm photographing the images to begin with, is um, to then place the work back, back there is a kind of, um, it, it, it really makes sense as a site. Um, so this work is called Fault Line, and it's sort of dealing with the ideas of um, faults and folds, not just being these kind of geological terms, but actually um, uh, sort of financial terms as well. Um, it sort of deals with the kind of instability of the sort of um, the, uh, the sort of perpetual kind of building and growth that is associated with with urban development. Um, so it's sort of collapsing and, and folding and trying to kind of understand the materials um, of, of the built environment. So sort of global built environment, not just specific to, to Melbourne. So perhaps I've probably said enough. So I, I'm going to leave it there, but um, I hope um, those of you that are listening can see the work in Melbourne and I'm looking forward to, um, yeah, to seeing some images and, and I really wish I could experience it and the festival myself as well. But thanks so much for, for listening and for having me um, and perhaps I'll, um, I'll leave it there. Thanks for listening. It's so great to hear about your work um, in more detail like this and I'm sure it'll be a great uh, background and introduction to the work for anyone that can come and see it in Melbourne. Uh, if you are here, Felicity's work is being presented on Franklin Street East, just off Swanson Street by the City Baths. It's been presented in partnership with the Metro Tunnel Creative Programme, and she is in wonderful company uh, adjacent to Kenta Kobayashi from Japan and Nico Krishno from South Africa, um, all creating large scale works. Not far away on uh, Burke Street, number 225, a rather peculiar space that I'm really excited to be activating. Uh, you'll be able to find Sarah Peter and Tobias's project, The Merge. And I'm delighted they're able to join us here um, uh, this evening in Copenhagen. And a big thank you guys for staying up late for us today. We appreciate the time zone difference to Australia. It's not always easy, so thank you. Um, so with the with a late night presentation on Merge, I'll hand over to you guys. Thank you. Hey Elias, and thanks for getting up early to have this uh, <laughs> talk with us. Yeah, um, we're here to talk about this book that we recently published in uh, November of last year. Um, I'll just say a little bit about what the idea behind the book is. It's, it's uh, really important to understand how we designed the book. Um, 
So basically, we, we're taking a, a starting point in this um, theory called the simulation argument, which is in very short that uh, reality is actually not reality. It's we are inside a computer program. It's this theory that is, has gained more and more uh, ground and is um, laid out by this Oxford professor, Nick Bostrom. Um, so um, we were really intrigued by this because it set us in a position where we could both explore physically what is going on with labs, with people developing simulations uh, in our base reality. And then we could also look at the world from the perspective, okay, what if this world is, if, if it's constructed? So it put us in a spot where we can question reality and we thought, well, that's kind of interesting to do that with photography because as you also have talks on here with the photo 21, um, the relationship between um, photography and truth is a delicate relationship. And we, we point our cameras at something and we say, okay, it's real, but how can we trust what we see is real and what do we choose to photograph? So uh, we um, will now show you um, um, some images uh, from the book. I'll see if I can get it to work. Um, here it is. Um, so um, it's um, it's we have many kind of different images, and we'll we'll give you some examples. Um, of course, this is the cover, um, but one thing we we found out um, with this category of, of, of images was that um, we would also like to include imagery that was from the perspective of robots or machines so we not only like look at um, we consider ourselves humans how how do we see the world we would also like to include um, how does do, do machines look back at us? So we experience uh, with a lot of machines seeing technologies like uh, camera visions of robots, and uh, and we finally um, <coughs> chose to go with this. Um, what you see here on the screen, which is a lighter um, photograph. Uh, it's a it's actually a scanner, a laser scanner, and the, what you see is like the dot, the laser beam dots reflected to the scanner. And um, this image is zoomed in very much uh, in the, it's on the end papers of the book. And then you flip, you have like uh, six spreads of end papers and you zoom out a little bit. So you start to see more what you're actually having. And maybe soon you can get an idea and you arrive here with this uh, image, a laser scan of, of course, um, uh, um, some flowers and then on the next spread, uh, you see an analog photograph of the same uh, motif. So that's something we've been playing with, these different mm -hmm. ways that reality can be shown from different entities, how we see the world differently. Um, and so that's how we kind of get the reader into the book and get like, try to question the whole image making uh, with this uh, introduction. So what it, what kind of images is more, is there one image is more objective than the other or is uh, which is most constructed? And so from there you arrive at um, at a sequence that is more analog photograph. And now we, we come into the labs. Maybe one of you can explain a little bit from here. Um, yeah. Um, what Peter said is um, we kind of both look at documentary and also technology. And this is more documentary, like we visited a lot of labs. Um, this one is in Germany. This is a model, like a 3D model of a head um, that is actually used for the computer to recognize a human. So you 3D print a head with a computer and then you learn the computer what a head looks like. Um, 
Yeah, and then also, and then it was also important, like another set of images that we have continuously through the book is people experiencing different kinds of simulations, like very uh, from very um, simple simulations to very advanced simulation. And maybe this is some somewhere in between. Uh, this is an affair, and this uh, lady here, she's in some kind of meditation simulation pyramid where like you are you get stimulated all your senses at the same time and it's supposed to bring you in a state of med meditation very swiftly and for us it was also important to include that kind of images through the book to 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 um to uh, kind of rationalize or to show how how we are really attracted as humans to re to live through games and simulations and the fact that something is not real it doesn't matter to us we we can uh, in fact we can, to have that um distortion of reality makes us maybe understand our life uh, lives better so that's another category that is uh, important um good point then um uh, then there is also just images for our world as as we see it now and from labs people trying to put life into these machines we think that's really fascinating that we're living in a time where we also call the book the merge which the title indicates is this it's the merge of the virtual and real and the humans and the robots and how the the lines get blurred between what we before the digital revolution thought as real and what is now real is like this mix of the virtual and the real so we have also another trick in the book um that we do to kind of play with the perception of the reader like the how for instance this photograph here it will be repeated after a while see here it is again uh but it's 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 actually not the same image. It's it's taken a little bit later. So so sometimes we play with like these duplic duplications and to kind of we want to confuse the reader. We want to create like an atmosphere that is maybe what am I looking at? Is it documentary? Is it real? Have I do I understand what I see or do I don't understand what I see? So we, we try to make small tricks like this. Mm. Another trick we did here with this kind of, it's another element that we have where we have this, it is a full uh, image landscape, horizontal image here, but we have this margin here in the middle. Uh, sometimes, so sometimes you you don't know if it's, it's a full um, width, uh, landscape uh, photograph or if it's two separate photos so that's another design element in the book that was taken in to try to put the reader a little bit off balance and and pay attention to what you're look at, looking at um so and the double image is also to create kind of a deja vu like because that's one of the you know <laughs> that is one of the mind fucks if you're thinking that you're living in a simulation you sometimes you you're puzzled by something in this world and like deja vu is for me and maybe peter and tobias is one of the points where i'm like this is weird you know i've i've been here before i've seen this you know we just said that just i've heard you say that before so to create the double images is also to create kind of you know if kind of the time is standing still or isn't it or like how do you how do you see the world yeah so a lot of these images we've shown i think they're all documentaries uh which is us you know from research going somewhere who has a specific um location that we want to explore but it can also just be something that we stumble across like something that we don't uh, think fits like we could include more like poetic images as well, because, you know, as Peter said, if we could kind of look at the world, like, is it a construction? It also gave us room to look at images that we thought like stood out or we couldn't really figure out. So most of the images are reportage, but also something we just stumbled across. And you want to explain that image? 
Uh, I can explain that image. Uh, this image, which seems like a very simple image, is actually the beginning of the internet. It's the actual logbook that uh, was used to to do the internet when they first do, did the first transcript uh, of the internet uh, with Professor Leonard Kleinrock uh, back in the 70s. So we wanted to include this because also the internet affects how we see the world a lot and has changed our perception of the world and has created this base for a lot of conspiracies with a lot of conspiracies regarding simulation theory. So we wanted to, in, to include this image as well. Oh, yeah, and the sign is a foldout. And that's another design element we have in the book that is this foldouts. Maybe we can uh, we can also show it here uh, physically that okay you think you are looking at some weird ice uh, landscape but then uh, inside you have like this uh, supercomputer uh, in in Germany and and to, and also it's important to say that in the very back of the book there is what what we're explaining right now is explained in very short uh, here. In, in the very back of the book. But um, the idea with this element is to say, um, yeah, it's it's fairly simple is to say that, okay, maybe things is not what you see on the surface, like maybe some, there's something behind everything. So like the idea that there is, there could be another reality um, behind. Yeah, and also the, I don't know if you call it the back end board, but a lot of the labs you don't go to, you know, a lot of the development you know, what we see is when it's on the market, like a robot, but a lot of the things that's happening is behind closed doors, like in labs, people doing tests on all kinds of things that you think is very futuristic. And you don't ever get to see unless you kind of go there and you do the research and you call them and you ask, can I go behind closed doors to see your research? Um, a lot of crazy things is going on. Yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, so that's basically uh, to sh that's basically all the dip like, I think we've like shown all the different design elements that we have trying to how we try to transfer this um, theory um, about reality into some design elements. And it's important to say, of course, we didn't come up with all of this ourselves. We worked with the designer Ramon Piss uh, very closely. Uh, we did First, we did a dummy with him for Paris Photo uh, 2020. <laughs> no, 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 2019. <laughs> yeah. And then we went there, um, had a lot of feedback, and then we used the next year to design this this final book. And we in, and together with Pest, we came up with all these uh, tricks and and this way to play with the with the perception of of the works. So I think that's basically... Um... And we have one thing to add in terms of the install uh, installations at uh, photo uh, 2021 is that after we did the dummy in Paris Photo, we added the images with the LiDAR. Um, after a lot of feedback, we showed it to a lot of people. They were, they wanted to get more into the idea of, you know, the, if, if this is a digital world, like we shoot everything on analog uh, cameras and everything is like very toned and nice like and the theory is more like the theory is more digital <laughs> so they wanted they were asking for a kind of well how how can you how can you explore this so that's when we added the lidar um, and tried actually to recreate some of the images that we shot on analog, tried to recreate them uh, with the with the LiDAR camera. So we actually made like still label, like trying to recreate the flowers, found the same vase, found the same flowers to see, okay, so you have the, you can put them side by side and see, you know, how one world would look like the other. So that was actually added like, almost at the end of the design process. Mm -hmm. And we think it's a nice contrast that it's not just analog images and, and looking at it from, like looking at it from afar, but actually trying to get into the mind of the, of the theory.
Great, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, it's such a beautiful book and I'm delighted that you were able to send over the first shipment to Australia that will be available to purchase alongside Felicity's book at the Photo 2021 shop that's now open and in partnership with Perimeter Books. Um, I think what's really interesting about both these projects is they're incredibly timely, but over the last year have taken on sort of new resonance or meaning with uh, the shifts that have happened uh, during COVID. Uh, both Felicity's, your, your work around cities has, you know, it's cities have shifted so dramatically in how we perceive them as, as centers for people to gather for, as financial centers and all these things to being these kind of deserted wastelands uh, that is kind of echoed in the imagery that you're playing with. Um, and Sao Peter de Beers, how um, uh, the merge is kind of the, you know, our experience of the merge has been accelerated, um, uh, you know, uh, from naught to a hundred um, in the last year. Um, both, you know, the fact that we're all here communicating on a Zoom screen um, to the fact that I've heard how um, online retail has fast forwarded about 10 or 20 years to what the predictions were and that we're all, you know, communicating and purchasing and and consuming things in this digital realm more, more so now than ever. Um, my first question I want to ask is actually about how these projects relate to bookmaking and how much the making of a book has informed the project um, along the way or how much the project itself has defined the end result of the book. I know you touched on this already, Felicity, so maybe we'll start with Sarah Peter and Tobias um, and look at how the two kind of play together. Because I know that this was always conceived as a book from the start. And it'll be interesting, Felicity, mm -hmm. to hear from you where, the, where that mm -hmm. kind of sense of it, it becoming a book came into the project and follows up from your first project phenomena that was also conceived as a book. Um, uh, so yeah, Sarah Peter and Tobias, how much was this sense of this being a book from the start influencing the type of imagery you're making, the direction of the project, or vice versa? Well, very much because we're, we're all educated photojournalists. So it, we look at stories that have some kind of narrative. Um, now we step a bit over in art photography. So the narrative in the merch is a little more difficult to see than maybe in phenomena, but it is a story like we, we, wanted, we want to tell stories. So the book was the obvious choice for that. Um, when we did, when we did ph Phenomena, we had never done an exhibitions before. So we started doing books before we did exhibitions. Um, and I think it's a way for us to understand the project and also understand the rhythm and, you know, understand what kind of pieces we are missing or what we need to have a full project that has like a full circle or you would understand the theme or the topic when when seeing the book or the exhibition so for us it's it comes naturally to start a project as a book and because we're not trained in doing exhibitions we're more trained in telling stories and doing research and figuring out you know how to put that together so yeah was it was a book from the and with such an ambitious project, I mean, this is years of research that's gone into it. You've traveled around the world, visiting labs um, and, and, and kind of sites that are really pushing the limits of, um, of our digital abilities. When do you know, when do you reach a point where you're like, okay, this, this is the project, this is, this is the book. We, 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 we've reached you know, the conclusion and it's ready because the books are very finite. Um, mm. It's a finite thing. Yeah, and that was really difficult with this project because um, because it's um, it's very fundamental the the question that is raised in this uh, theory that you cannot trust your reality. It's so it's it's uh, is omnipresent. So you can do it all the time, everywhere. 
any any place. So uh, so that's that was like it started out being like a liberty that you can always <laughs> do photographs for this, but it's it's of course ended up to be like um, a curse because you don't know when you when you're done. Uh, you could you could keep on going forever, and I think it started taking shapes because we. Um, we we ha we had a show with the uh, with the British uh, Journal of Photography uh, uh, IPA award, so we had to, you know, put it together as an exhibition, and we had also another show in in Holland in Breda, uh, and so when there we had to first we printed all the negatives, all like the three thousand five hundred negatives, and and sorted them and started put them in in um, sequences and i think then we realized okay we have so much on the list that we want to do but we also have starting to have a body of work here and starting to have something that that works so mm. we started to debate okay might, maybe we should slow down and edit more instead of producing just keep producing so yeah and also we looked at we started to, uh, you know, repetate, uh, what do you call it, gentelte? Yeah, repetate. Yeah, yeah, repetate ourselves. Like, we, we wanted to photograph more robots, but then we're like, you don't want to look at five different robots. You have one robot, okay, off the list, what next? So at one point we were like, okay, we can go to more labs, like they might have even more crazy computers or whatever, but at some point you just, you have to look at, also the comparisons and the the flow uh because we can't point on, on everything it's more like if the images you know the the body of work if they speak the same language i think they have to stay in i think it's 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 good we didn't expand it because it might have changed style so <laughs> whatever um yeah at right. one point we just had to stop just done That's yeah then the and then the first robots we photograph start being outdated. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a snapshot in time. And I've also just put it together. We have two winners of the International Photography Award, JP. I just, yeah. <laughs> beautiful moment. Um, <laughs> now for the, over to you. Um, the, your work is incredibly spatial. I mean, it's all built for this kind of phenomenological experience of moving through uh, the installation, through the photography and kind of experience in three dimensional space. So how, 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 how does that translate for you? Like did the book, um, was, was the book a natural progression? Did it fit into that? Like, and how did that inspire the content or the, or the book making? Or I, mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's an interesting question because I, I mean, it, in my, if I'm going to be completely, like, if completely honest in this moment is I was actually really resistant to, make, to making a book for a while. And I, you know, I, I sort of had some conversation to, to you know, uh, to collaborate with the publisher and, and um, we'd had these kind of conversations about maybe we'll make just this huge like A2 book <laughs> and because you know I print at such large scale and maybe and then we sort of <laughs> I think there were like practical reasons sort of meant that would that would be a sort of um, not the right not the right way to go but it it just took a really really long time of putting things together and I, I think because my practice is very spatial and I'm not you know I don't have this sort of um, I suppose that our processes are so different, you know, and really what I was starting to, to build up is this sort of um, archive of images of me photographing my my work, the sort of um, the physical work that I was making. And it was only when that kind of, that, that body of work, work built up enough for me to sort of look at it in comparison with the, um, with the sort of source material that the sort of thing developed, but, I was really keen that it, you know it needed to sort of um, it needed to somehow echo the processes that I was using in my practice, and um, so somehow so that that installation property uh, that that came kind of two years previously was the sort of I, I thought okay, I'm going to sort of apply the methods here to the sort of wider practice that I've sort of had um, 
uh, previously and, and sort of go forward. But what I think is interesting then is the bookmaking then it started to inform my practice. So there was this sort of circular um, uh, process going on and, and that show remains in development, which came 2020. Um, you know, amazingly somehow did a show in 2020, but it happened um, for a little bit. And that the, yeah, that suddenly kind of extracted the methods back. It's sort of almost like the, the methods from property went into the book and then back out again into this exhibition. And it's, you know, this conversation about when is a project finished, you know, it's, that's the title kind of explains that, that it, it sort of never is very much like the city, which is constantly kind of adapting and changing. So is, so is the artwork that I'm making to kind of reflect that. Um, and I think the book itself is, is unfinished. It's a sort of, it's a snapshot of a moment um, uh, of a sort of set of processes and, and remains in development it's the, the, with the show that sort of you know developed alongside it is sort of um, is a kind of reflection on what's just happened and what I've made but it's it's by no means a kind of complete project and that's I think as well uh, especially it's interesting you note the BJP award thing because so many kind of photography competitions and projects like this is that they're always sort of talk about projects or like series or these like 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 there should be these kind of well-rounded things that are completed and I um I have always had a problem with that because I you know on, on one hand of course the storytelling and the, 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 these things need to be succinct but the idea of kind of closing something off and, and kind of I don't know making making people kind of shoot on their work into these sort of very prescribed sort of sets of circumstances I'm I'm, I'm not so keen on that and I quite like the work to just sort of develop and maybe you go back to a previous project maybe I go back to the book and change it maybe it gets rephotographed and becomes something new and I think that's you know I think that's kind of fine so that's yeah that's kind of how I feel about it I guess. Um, thank you uh, just if anyone is watching has questions we've we're going to have just a few minutes left so do send them in now um, so Bookmaking, it's, you know, it's a very specific process. Uh, it's very time consuming, uh, both to work through it, but also the time for, you know, production and printing and turning it around. You know, when we're able to just publish an image online and share it around, you know, share it with the world instantaneously compared to the process of making the book, there's a, there's a time element in, involved in that and then it sits as a fixed thing. Uh, for you know, forever, it will be in it will be in uh, libraries and collections that people can go back to. Does that? How does that impact the way you think about making a book? That there's there's a kind of permanency to the work as opposed to you know a temporary installation, or or or, or stream of images on on a website or social media. Does that kind of long, longevity feed into? the way you think about uh, what is being presented? Feel free to jump in either one. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it's, I mean, the debate we have when we edit the final book is of course emotional and intense and, and sometimes we have a big dispute over something and because it's so, it, it I mean, uh, as Felicity, you said you could go back and change the book. I think we feel that when we've done the book, it's really done. It's mm -hmm. it's finished. So uh, so of course it's it's very powerful that now the sequence is, is as it is, and it's how you're going to read it from, and and that's how we're going to persuade the reader into this world, into this universe we were trying to create. So it's it's there and it's in thousand copies and it's um i don't know if we'll be able to change it uh so <laughs> so it does mean that we think a lot but we, we uh we worked with a lot of dummies uh for this project so we had a few physical dummies but i think we had we had we have so many versions <laughs> i mean we had so many covers uh we tried so we, we try a lot and, you know, print a lot and try and work with physical samples a lot um, to, to see how it feels and, you know, go back and forth. And, and I, I remember like one night we didn't agree and we're like, okay, we'll sleep on it and it's the next day, you know, <laughs> because it feels like um, a baby and it's like, it has to be perfect, right? So, so at least that's, I think that, I think I can talk for all of us. That's how we kind of perceive the book as an, as an object that is as there forever. So 
So it's it's very delicate to work with that and the emotional. That is. <laughs> Felicity. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I know exactly what you mean about that, that sort of the permanence of it when you see it, when you see hundreds of copies of the thing together. And when it's when you've been working on this dummy where you see this one thing and it's um I don't know, you, you sort of you know it's going to be printed in, you know, in a volume, but it, it's suddenly when you see that mass of it, it do, you're right, it is this kind of permanent thing. And I think, you know, when I'm talking about, you know, or maybe it's fine, it's unfinished, it can change, it can be kind of recontextualized or whatever. But but yet, of course, that moment when it's published in that form, that is a thing that is is kind of physical and it's done. But um I suppose I suppose for me it's like it it's an un if, I guess it's an unfinished project because the project just continues. Um, that yeah, perhaps that part of it is resolved in some form, but um, but yeah, the project continues. So I sort of, I don't yeah, I, I'm I'm quite happy that there's this sort of um, this moment where it's kind of marked. And when you do an exhibition, you know, it's it, you're right. It's sort of it's it's temporary. It has this, and there's there's just one of them, you know. <laughs> Whereas this thing is sort of um, it, it will be kind of received in in different ways depending on. Um, depending on who's seeing it and where in the world it, it appears and so it's sort of whilst um yeah whilst it's sort of finished and complete and has this sort of physicality it's also um I suppose yeah it's also kind of received in different contexts by different people so that's 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 a real positive I think and I know you could say the same for social media but um you know it's sort of a vast uh there's a sort of immediacy to how how you can share your work and and so many people can see it at, at a given time but it's um yeah i don't know i've sort of gone off on a bit i guess it's a sense of permanence of it that that, that works thanks um we've got a question sent in from christian hagblum for sarah peter de Beers. uh he wants to know how when and why you became a collaborative team yeah to be yes. <laughs> uh, it started out uh, six years ago uh, now, and we all had this common interest in UFOs and UFO believers um, and conspiracies in general. It was something that was uh, we were very intrigued by all of us. And at that point, we've been sharing an office together for five years, and we we're always talking about collaborating. And the project about UFO believers just came in handy as the project for us, something that we could join forces around. And um, we did that. Uh, and it started a way of working for us that was really natural and really given. We were chanting itself, ourselves and each other, and we just felt in many ways liberated by this way of working together instead of being on our own which we were used to so it just made sense and from going on from phenomena we just finished phenomena just finished doing an exhibition with phenomena in san francisco when we started off doing the merch and it just came natural to us to continue working together and luckily we're still able to do that yeah, we share a common interest in weird <laughs> matters. <laughs> we have our own club, like we can talk to each other about, you know, theories that, you know, our family don't want to <laughs> don't want to hear about. We believe in the COVID-19, we're not, we're not in that club. So, yeah, but all conspiracies we love. Otherwise, I'm so happy you found each other. Um, <laughs> Um, now, we have, you know, we've worked with a lot of students in the festival and um, bookmaking comes up uh, a lot as a way of kind of uh, communicating your practice and reaching audiences um, internationally. Uh, briefly, from your experiences, are there, what are the potential pitfalls or any kind of insider tips that you would pass on that you wish someone had told you before you started? the process because we all learn through this and um uh yeah what what would, what would you pass on to yourself if, uh, if you were doing this again book making is gonna make you poor <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything to add to that felicity yeah i agree it's certainly not a money making scheme is it 
I mean, it's yeah. What can I? That that and um, maybe not underestimating the length of time that that, that it takes. Um, it's you know, I was never under the illusion that it's something you could knock up quickly. But I suppose that the, the you know everything from. Um, uh, uh, you know even when even once I had the final edit and it was like it was months and months before because then it was sort of trying you know it, color grading everything kind of I, I traveled to Italy to get the book printed we did all the kind of color testing there it was like a really 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 long process um I felt like it should have come out about a year before it did so I think yeah may, maybe sort of not underestimating how, underestimating how long it takes Thank you. We've just got a final question that's been sent in by Lucy McGow, and she wants to, this is a perfect way to bring this to a close. Uh, she wants to know Sarah Pina and Tobias, and I'll ask Felicity this as well. Do you think we are living in a simulation? Yes. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> no, but we do believe in UFOs, so. <laughs> no, Felicity. maybe, I don't. So un un undecided. <laughs> Felicity, any yeah. thoughts on this? I, I, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say a firm <laughs> no. And the reason for that is because uh, I, I suppose in my practice, I'm really... I suppose I'm really engaging with the physical world and and the, the effect that perhaps digital space has on the physical but I I very much place myself in in the physical realm. So that's where I'm that's where I'm staying for now. Amazing. Thank you. Okay, so after this call comes to an end, the Photo 2021 team are going to be heading down to the Centre for Contemporary Photography, where we're going to be continuing talks and panel discussions and book launches, um, IRL, um, in the real physical world. Um, uh, do come down and join us um, alongside the events. You'll be able to see the first presentation of the Australian New Zealand Photo Book Award alongside at the space around the corner, the very first presentation in Australia, the Castle Dummy Award, which shows the future of photo books. These are books that have not yet been made yet, as well as a special opening of the Asia Pacific uh, Photo Book Archive. Uh, the, the Photo 2021 shop will be uh, available to purchase Felicity's book as well as Sarah Peter Tobias's uh, The Merge um, and Ruth Madison's exhibition at CCP is now also on display. So please join us. A big thank you to Memento Pro and for the, to the Goethe Institute for helping make the photo book weekend happen. And that just um, remains for me to thank Felicity and to thank Sarah, Peter and Tobias for joining us late night on Friday, early morning on Saturday. Wish you were here. Thank you so much. And congratulations with the festival, Elias. Thank Great you. Yeah. Wish you could be here. <laughs>